Hello everybody and welcome back to another video. Now in today's video, as you can see by the setup that we have here, we're going to be doing another video in the MacBook Pro 2011 saga that I've done a couple of different videos on over the past week or so. I first did the laptop haul video where I got this machine along with those Dell laptops which you can probably see are still in the background here on my desk. The second video I did is actually diagnosing this thing and figuring out what is wrong with it. And if you haven't seen that video, I would recommend that you go ahead and check it out up in the cards right now just so you'll be up to speed on what it is that we're going to be doing here. In today's video, as you can see by the title, we're going to be attempting to resurrect this thing, get it up and running again. And first off, before we go any further, I just want to give a huge thank you to all of you guys who were sending me comments and tweets and messages on how to get this thing working again. I had a ton of you guys comment on that original video, giving me some different ways, some different methods that I could possibly use to get this up and uh, running again. I had a couple of people send very detailed instructions. I just want to give a huge thank you to you guys for spending your time to actually do that. But there are a couple of different methods that we can use to actually get this machine up and running again, hopefully at least. Uh, one of them which we're going to be trying today is actually disabling the onboard, or not the onboard, but the external graphics chip that's not external to the system but is a dedicated chip um, on the logic board. We're going to be attempting to disable that and re-enable the onboard Intel graphics that are built into the Intel processor that is on here. And I've had a couple of you guys say that this method does work. There was actually a patch tool created by DOSDude1 who actually created the um, Mac OS High Sierra, Mac OS Sierra, and a new Mac OS Mojave patcher. There's also a couple of other methods that do involve soldering and actually taking apart this thing. One guy suggested actually reflowing the GPU, and a couple of you guys had mentioned that there is a way to essentially wire the GPU to where it's not actually going to receive power, to where it's fully disabled, and just use the onboard Intel graphics. So we're going to be trying this software method first because it is the easiest. It doesn't you know, require any soldering or any actually opening up this thing. It's all done from the command line terminal. All right, so the first method that I tried out here was booting into single user mode on the 2011 MacBook, which you guys have seen this done before because this was the only way I was able to get this machine to boot in that previous video. So what I was trying to do was type out a bunch of different commands that would allow me to disable or essentially move some files pertaining to that AMD GPU. And by moving those files around, it's essentially going to force this computer to boot using the Intel integrated graphics. Now it will boot up in a very low color mode, which is what that I mentioned before. Uh, in that previous video as well, I said that there is a way to get this machine to boot by typing some commands in here, but it will force the computer to boot into a low resolution mode. I, had, I have uh, figured out also by the help of you guys, which uh, I just want to give a huge thank you to you guys for helping to point this out to me as well, that there is another command that you can type in to fix that issue. Now the problem that I'm having here is you see that it's giving me an error pertaining to or well it's saying that you don't have the proper permissions to type this or, or to perform this command what i was trying to do was let's see if i can have it here i was trying to move one of these controller.kex files to a new directory that i made called disabled extensions i was actually following a guide that somebody dm me on twitter i believe his name is let's player 24 7. um he actually sent me this very nice detailed guide showing me, okay, type out all these commands. It was very uh, nicely formatted. I want to give a huge thank you to you for actually spending your time to send that out to me. But um, it's giving me th this uh, error here saying that when I actually run this, you'll see that it says uh, operation not permitted. So what we're going to be doing is putting this method on hold just for now. And we're going to be once again swapping the hard drive from this computer back to its original destination, the mid-2009. And what I'm going to be doing is booting off of that hard drive, which does work on this computer because this machine doesn't have any sort of um, graphics issues. And I'm going to essentially move those files from within OS X and then swap the hard drive again and see if that solves the issue. So I will be right back once I have swapped the hard drive. All right, welcome back, guys. So. 
we have booted up from the mid-2009 MacBook right here. And what we're gonna be doing is essentially trying to do what we just did from single user mode, but booted into the OS. And hopefully this will not cause us any problems. So I'm gonna go ahead and make these modifications on the El Capitan drive, just cause that's the OS I wanna boot from on the mid-2011 or the 2011 MacBook. What we gotta do here is go into the system folder, library, once this decides to load up, we gotta go into extensions, which is right down here. And we need to find all of the text files. Okay, I guess this is just, oh, there we go, okay. So we need to find all of the AMD text files, okay? So, it looks like it's just all of these. There's AMD right there. I'm just gonna select all of these here that pertain to AMD. Let me actually just go ahead and make a new folder on the desktop. We'll call this uh, Kext. So it's copying those files right here. For some reason, it still says untitled folder. But it's going to copy them, and then I'm going to actually delete them. I do want to save a backup just in case that there are any issues. Now we're going to go ahead and move them to the trash. It's probably going to give us a bunch of permission um, problems. Yep, I'm going to type in our password. Hit OK. There we go, they're all gone. So I don't believe there's anything else because that was sorted alphabetically. So if I go ahead and search for AMD, there should be nothing in here. So it looks like they're all gone, so that's good. Okay, so now all of those extensions are totally gone from the folder that the extensions have to be in for the system to utilize them. So what we're gonna do now is we're going to remove the hard drive from this computer, put it back into the 2011 machine, and I'm gonna force the computer to boot from this partition, the El Capitan partition, and if everything works, it should boot up in a low graphics mode, and then we can run a couple commands to fix that and have the computer utilize the onboard graphics chip. So, let's go ahead and let's power this down here. So we're gonna shut down. All right, so the machine is off. Now I'm going to flip the machine over take off the back panel. I didn't screw this in just because I would be swapping these uh, constantly and if there's any issues I'm gonna have to swap it back to this computer. So we'll go ahead and remove the hard drive right here. There's our Toshiba drive. I'm just gonna set this piece in here but just leave it unscrewed because uh, I'm not gonna boot this machine up unless there's a hard drive in here. So we'll go ahead and uh, set this aside. I got so many computers on this desk here. We're gonna grab the 2011 machine once again. Take our hard drive, plug it back up to the computer. There we go. This one we'll go ahead and screw in because just because you basically have to or else the hard drive will wobble around. So we obviously don't want that. So we'll go ahead and screw it in, perfect. Put our back plate back on, but not screw it in in case there's any issues and we gotta take the hard drive back out. Take our power cord, plug it up, and uh, let's turn this machine on and hope for the best. So we're gonna turn on, we're gonna hold down the option key to bring up the options menu. And we're gonna boot from Michael's MBP, which is the El Capitan partition. And hopefully, if everything goes the way it should, this machine will boot up to the login screen, but be in a very low graphics state. Are you kidding me? Are you kidding me? It, it didn't even work. All right, so let's go ahead and try out one more thing. I'm gonna try to run this command anyway, because what it appears to do is it appears to essentially turn off the GPU. It sets the power to, to zero or whatever. All right, so we just typed out this command here. I'll go ahead and leave it down in the video description below. But what it looks to do is actually turn off the GPU, essentially. I mean, it's not, it's still gonna receive power. So we're gonna go ahead and type out reboot here. Oh, check that out. Oh my gosh. That did it, that worked. Okay. Maybe it was, I mean, I don't know what the deal with those text files were, but when I deleted them from the folder, 
from the uh, extensions folder, the machine still wouldn't boot. When I typed out the command to modify the power preferences, that worked. What's up? This is Michael from the future here. I just wanted to jump in here really quickly and clarify a couple of things and talk about what the deal is with those text files. So the reason why this machine booted up, at least as far as I can tell, is because I went into single user mode and ran that NVRAM command, which modified the power preferences of the GPU. Now, I believe that this is the only reason that this machine booted up because if you go to DOS Dude One's website where he has his guide of disabling the dedicated GPU on this MacBook Pro, he doesn't even mention anything about those AMD KEXT files that were in the system library uh, extensions folder. Because in his tool that we'll actually get into in a little bit here, which I do um, eventually download and try to run on this machine, he has created an automated tool which handles all of those text files for you. You don't have to go in and modify any of them or delete any of them. So what I'm trying to say here is if you have one of these computers, one of these MacBooks, and you have an issue like I'm having here with the onboard or with the dedicated AMD GPU, just go to DOS Dude One's website and follow his instructions. It's again at dosdude1.com slash GPU disable. I'll have the uh, link down below and follow that guide because it basically goes step by step. It first tells you to go into single user mode, run that command, reboot, and then boot into recovery mode to disable the system integrity protection, which we'll also get into uh, a little bit later on, and then download his tool, which handles everything else for you. So that's all that I really wanted to say. Basically, if you're having this problem, go to his website, follow the guide, and hopefully it'll work for you. Back to the video. But check that out. That literally made the system boot now. And it's not even in a low graphics state. It's totally working. I like how this says upgrade to macOS Mojave. This computer doesn't even support Mojave. Why would it be <laughs> why would it be notifying me to upgrade to Mojave when this machine doesn't even support it? Of course, macOS is going to freak out because of security, so we'll go ahead and open up system preferences here. We're going to go into security and privacy, and we're going to open anyway, because screw um, macOS's protections, right? So here we go. MacBook Pro dedicated GPU disabler. This program will disable the, the dedicated GPU on 15-inch or 17-inch MacBook Pro systems that have dual video cards installed. After this program is finished running, the following things will be done. An NVRAM variable will be set that prevents the machine from using its dedicated video card, which I believe is what we did from this, because this is an NVRAM command right here. So, the video acceleration drivers, kernel extensions, which are the KEXT files, will, for the respective installed dedicated video card will be removed, which is what we did, back up to the root of the hard drive. A launch daemon will will be installed that prevents the video card drivers from being reinstalled during software updates. That's what we don't have, but that is extremely useful. So we'll go ahead and click next. Um, system integrity protection is still enabled. So system integrity protection is what this command does, this CSRUTIL disable. This disables the system uh, integrity protection, which is essentially a uh, a safeguard that Apple has implemented into Mac OS which will not allow core system files to be modified uh, without it being disabled. The only way to disable it is to apparently boot off of a recovery partition and boot into terminal. Yeah, so this right here is looking much better already. Um, so what we have to do here is, let me go ahead and just use English for the main language. And here are the OS 10 utilities. What we're gonna do is go up here to the utilities menu, which you can't see, and we're going to open up our terminal application. And once the terminal opens up, I'm gonna go ahead and bring it down here. We're gonna type in CSRUTIL, disable. And that has successfully disabled system integrity protection. Please restart the machine for the changes to take effect. So we're going to do just that. We're going to restart the machine. I'm going to hold down the option key just so we confirm that we do want to boot up from the um, El Capitan partition. And then we're going to run that patch. And then uh, I'm literally just going to buy an SSD for this thing. That is my next step. And here we go. We're going to click on next. 
for some reason it still says system integrity protection is uh, enabled for some reason which is odd yeah that doesn't make any sense how I don't really understand why this isn't working because I went in to recovery mode you guys just saw me do that and uh, I disabled it so I don't understand why it's why it's active again how on earth did it reactivate I guess we can try it again let's go ahead and boot back into recovery mode all right, so I am like genuinely confused. What I'm doing now is actually booting up into single user recovery mode. You can do this by holding down Command S and R on boot up. What I'm doing now is I boot into single user recovery mode. We're waiting for this to boot up here. Um, I, or I guess it's, okay, there we go. So it's, so it's booted up and we're gonna go ahead and type in C-S-R-U-T-I-L disable and we're waiting we're waiting we're still waiting I don't know what like I seriously have no idea why that this is happening and I looked up on DOS dude one's uh, website again and a couple of other uh, sites and they and they, they only say just to open up into recovery mode and run this command reboot it and then run the tool well let's just try this again so we've typed in csrutil disable it says successfully disabled system integrity protection please restart so we're going to type in reboot and press enter and now we should theoretically boot it back into mac os 10 el capitan and run his program and it should say that system integrity protection is disabled if it doesn't then i really have no clue uh what's causing it to stay enabled all right so we've booted back up i'm gonna go ahead and zoom in on the monitor right here a little closer so you can actually see everything and uh i guess we're gonna try to run this uh tool again here let's just let's see we we'll hit next i'm hoping for two green check marks nope how is this, like, I don't understand. System integrity protection status enabled. I just, you guys saw, I just went in and disabled it. So I don't understand how it's getting re-enabled. So if you guys have had this issue, if you guys have found any sort of solution for it, be sure to let me know down in the comments. I would love to, to uh, hear from you guys. But I think for now that is going to end off this video because it was a success. We got this thing to boot. It's working now. We have, I mean, and I'll actually show you. We'll go up here into the Apple menu. Under displays here, you can see that it says Intel HD graphics 3512 megabytes. So it is running off of the Intel HD graphics. So, I mean, we accomplished what I wanted to accomplish. We got this machine up and running. It is able to be used as a regular Mac. I mean, you can do everything that you normally do on a Mac computer. You can do it on this computer. It is fully working now, at least. It definitely seems that way. I mean, I haven't really noticed any slowdowns. I mean, the system honestly seems faster from what I'm used to on the mid-2009. That might be just the placebo effect. I don't know, but I'm definitely... I'm definitely going to be getting an SSD for this. Like I said in that first video, I'm probably just gonna get that $20, 128 gig uh, Kingston drive or any other drive that I can find for you know around 20 to $30 because I don't need a super big hard drive in this computer. This one in here right now is like 120 gigs. So I'm gonna probably stick around that size because it, you know this isn't gonna be my main computer. It's just gonna be used whenever that I need to use a uh, Mac OS based program or a tool for a video or um, whatever but I will definitely be doing a follow-up to this video which is like the what third follow-up now and in that video I'm actually going to be installing the SSD once I get it and installing a fresh copy of Mac OS 10 on this computer for now guys I just want to thank you so much for watching this video if you enjoyed this one definitely be sure to give it a thumbs up be sure to get subscribed down below and turn on channel notifications if you haven't already to get notified whenever I upload new videos, which I do every single week on this channel. And as always, I will see you guys in the next video.